Hi, I'm Josh Peck, and my last meal would be a Coke Zero, mac and cheese made with shells, orange chicken, beef chow fun, chicken parm, penne vodka, hot lava cake, mint chip ice cream cake, and vanilla wedding cake with sprinkles. All humans have one thing in common. We all gotta eat and we're all slowly dying. Josh Peck, welcome to Last Meals. Josh, number one, it's an honor to be here. We did have to establish that I'm Josh one, you're Josh two. Otherwise, we'd have to recreate the Ewan McGregor scene in the island. Mm. Did anyone see the island? Not I. Ewan McGregor has to shoot Ewan McGregor at the end, but you don't know which Ewan McGregor is the real Ewan McGregor. I'm just a big fan of Ewan McGregor. <laughs> Full stop. He does good work. He does good work. <laughs> I could talk about him all day. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, no, so have you put a lot of thought into your last meal before? You know what I have? Because I contemplate death a lot. Thank God, man. I think everybody does. You know, as a fellow Jewish person, mm -hmm. I feel like it's part of our sort of uh, our trend yes. to, to contemplate our existence. Mm -hmm. little existential dread. You know, one of my favorite websites is, I believe in Texas, for death row. They show the last meal for everyone who's been on death row the last hundred years. So I'll be on Amazon getting paper towel, and then I'll be like, what's Joe doing on his last days? Check in. Speaking of being Jewish, thinking about death, I was trying to explain the concept to my Christian coworker about kvetching. Mm, like, kvetching. I, was, I was just kind of, you know, I was complaining about stuff, and she's Why like, oh my God, can I fix this? Is this something? And I'm like, no, I'm just kvetching. It's just part of it's what we do. So Yiddish is sort of like a Jewish language. Mm. It doesn't really, it's not spoken by anyone else. So when people say we're clan-like and we're, you know, we have we have a lot of secrets. We had to. Maybe they're right. People were chasing us, you man. Know, they were pulling the levers. They were trying to kill us. We had to you know, figure it out. You know, truth in every joke. Chinese food. Um, <laughs> so yeah, kvetching is whining. Uh, there's a lot of Yiddish words. Yiddish is sort of like a Germanic Hebrew hybrid mix. It's, it's the original collab. And <laughs> <laughs> Featuring Pitbull. <laughs> and uh, so there's just great words. Well, before we get all for Clemson, you ready to get into it? Boom, Yiddish. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Josh, to your first course up, we have restaurant style mac and cheese made with shells. We did a little bechamel with some gruyere, some sharp cheddar, topped it with herby breadcrumbs, baked it off nice and crusty, and then the coldest Coke Zero sugar and we'll get into the difference between Coke Zero Sugar and Diet Coke and Coke Zero in a minute that we could possibly buy. Uh, please, do you do you decant your Coke Zero? Yeah, I like I like to aerate it. Yeah, I like nice. to get some air in there. Um, look, the reality is, uh, and as some may know, I used to be 300 pounds. I don't think I talk about it enough. Hold on, hold on. I got cards with a bunch of stuff written on it, and it's all about that. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, a lot of people are like, hey, Josh, move on. And I'm like, I can't. No. And the truth is, when I would tell people about my like binging meals, it always included a Diet Coke, and they'd be yeah. like, well, when you're that big, Mm -hmm. Why don't you just have regular soda? I'm like, are you sick? No, it's the hope. Sick freak? It's the hope that that yeah. Diet Coke is like, you're like, this is my carbon offset. Right. Right, yeah. So a Diet Coke always with every cheat meal, and you need the bubbles, you need that crisp mm. hit. Yeah, a little bit of acid really to round in. everything out. Exactly. All right, tell me about the mac and cheese. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. You me, just uh, get, here, I'll serve please, you, I'll serve you. Just attack it. Is there anything, nice. nothing not delicious is served in a skillet? Yes, correct. Is that a fair observation? That is the most fair observation, and truly. Mac and cheese. What else could be in a skillet? I mean, yeah, like, uh, oh, pff, as a chef, you know, you get a nice, like even like a skillet pizza. Yeah, uh, yes. But anything that shouldn't, that's not even cooked in a skillet, french fries and a burger, you serve in a skillet, and I'm like, I'm immediately in. Oh, that's this is, nice. This is proper looking. At 10.30 a.m., that's a nice hit. This, uh, lo looking at you and your level, your wow. body fat percentage eating this disgusting food mm. makes me happy and also upset. Yes, wait, okay, let's talk about you being happy and upset and fat and around food because mm. the reason I all my cards are written about you being fat is because I was also a very fat, funny Jewish kid. I was like, 285 pounds, which I believe really? is like 12 less than your peak. This is when I was like 14. Me too. Yeah. And look we're at right us there. Now. Look at it. We did it, baby. We're chubby caterpillars. <laughs> now we're beautiful butterflies. You talk about food both being like good and evil. And you also talk about how it, it doesn't really leave you, right? Like the, the Diet Coke, you're always kind of worrying about it. Do you like look at this food right now and do you still feel that internal push pull of this is both a delight and something that could lead me to hate myself? No, luckily I've sort of turned the corner when with my approach on food. The way I really want to do this is like shirts off, alone. Yeah. Netflix mm. and just like we can take our shirts off if we want to. 
You can. Okay, I don't know. And, <laughs> and then I just want to just like, and, and just be able to have just like a free cry. Yeah. You know, just out of nowhere, just burst into tears. I try not to judge myself too much on this stuff. And I also realize that like, there's balance. It's yeah. possible. And I know like not everyone can do that. Like I have people in my life who are like, I can't mess with white sugar mm -hmm. or white flour. It makes me nuts. Yeah. But for me, I've been able to like indulge here and there. And then after this, go on a three and a half hour hike to burn off a quarter of it. But that also sounds like an obsession, right? Because I, I get accused of having exercise bulimia all the time mm. because of my constant working out and also I refuse to stop eating delicious mac and cheese constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so like, do you still have those like obsessive, I mean, you were an addict, you talk a lot about that in your book, Happy People Are Annoying, wherever books are sold, buy the books, you schmucks. I'm just eating. <laughs> but I mean, do you still have those like completely obsessive tendencies and do you think it's bad objectively? Mm, I would say assets become defects when you overdo them. Yeah. So it's good to be ambitious, it's good to be hardworking, but when you become, you know, obsessed with things, when you overdo it, when mm. you, you know, it's just about, unfortunately, balance, which is really upsetting. That's because. such an upsetting thing to tell people though, right? Take a hit of this Diet Coke Zero, and you tell me, you tell me what kind of, what are we dealing with in the flavor profile? So the flavor profile right now, right? You got the cola nut, obviously, that's the main thing that makes Coke, Coke. Um, wow. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean the cola, it's in the name, right? It's a nut from West Africa. But the thing that really makes this fantastic is that uh, separating it from the aspartame of Diet Coke is a chemical called a sulfame potassium. That was the new big thing, but then now that has been phased out for sugar alcohols like erythritol and xylitol. So it's really just good artificial sweetener technology. If you can't tell Josh, I'm also obsessive. Wow. Yeah, and I can't turn it off. I didn't know that the cola nut is from West Africa, mm. and I didn't know it was sweetened with sugar alcohols. But what I know is this formulation, mm. it's just special. And I don't know who the food scientists are at Coke. I'm sure they're nice people. But what the gift that they gave the world with this Coke Zero, can this video series be sponsored by Coke? Coca-Cola, come on. Uh, disregard all the bad things I've said about you in the past. <laughs> All right, Josh, course number two, we have orange chicken with white rice, bunch of orange zest, a little bit of Shaoxing cooking wine, marinated chicken thigh, deglazed in there. And then we have our beef chow fun. This is the ode to New York Chinese cuisine. We got the thick chow fun noodles, my personal favorite, the hammered out beef, dredged in the cornstarch, a lot of dark soy. Good stuff, man, dig in. This is gorgeous. Dig in, and, and you you talk about this, uh, you know, ordering in with your mom in New York when you're a kid, mm -hmm. having a lot of fond memories of Chinese food. Yeah, I love Chinese food. I don't mean to be like the most Jewish guest you've ever had, as <laughs> we talked about it, before, man. it feels like there's a symbiotic relationship yeah. with you know Jews and Chinese food. Big time. Did you actually grow up going oh, yeah. to eat Chinese food on Christmas? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How good is that? Is that like the best orange well, chicken you've ever had? Mm -hmm. Give full credit, Lily Cousins made this orange chicken. She crushed it. I just feel upset that you're in such good shape and you're eating this with me. Like no, I'm, in, I'm in fake good shape, I'm in dad good shape. <laughs> you're in proper good shape. You're in like Chris Hemsworth shape. I'm only doing that, oh And I don't have a crush on you. If you do have a crush, I have a crush on you. I have I, an emotional crush, but physically I'm into women. Can I, that's fine. I mean, I, I think everyone's kind of fluid. Like I know the Kinsey scale is like a little bit problematic. Like yeah, I think yeah, yeah. everyone at their heart is, is kind of, Pan. Um, so That's what my shrink tells me. <laughs> a great person, Josh. A great person once said, "You're an amalgamation of trauma." Yeah. That's, like, that's can we that's talk about you mouth. and me being fat more? Because like this is what I came. This is what I came here for. Yeah, we were chubby we boys. Here. We were chubby Which, boys. And I think that's probably why we have these great personalities and not terrible faces. Correct. Right. Yeah. You know. So now, but we were forced at a necessity to develop a great you know, sort of ability in which to socialize and be hopefully- We were thrust into the fire. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, I think, think of the word trauma and they think of it solely as like a horrific event. Right. But when you grow up a fat kid, especially, you know, I know the body positivity, fat positivity movement has done great things. And those are ideals that I very much believe in. Mm -hmm. that you talk about it a lot. We grew up in a different era. It was strictly different back then. Talk to me about like the legitimate trauma of being fat. You talk about your agent, saying that you're too fat for an Oreo commercial when you were 10 True. years old. That's that's freaking traumatic, man. Shout out, Nancy. You know who you are. We love you, Nancy. Thanks for that one. Good work. Yeah, I mean, th the reality was it was really, really challenging at that time in the 90s and the mid-aughts, as the kids say. Um, it just felt like open season to talk about people's looks and their weight, and there was no way around it. And 
I would literally, I was on my friend uh, Claudia Oshry's show, Girl With No Job, and mm. I remember she said, sometimes like people felt the need to shame you as a way of, like they, they felt so powerless in helping you, that yeah. they thought, oh, maybe if I shame him, he'll mm. do something about it. Inevitably, listen, I don't think you learn anything on a good day, mm. and so sometimes you have to be at a bottom and sure. kind of hopeless to make a big change. So I think that is a part of it, but it certainly was painful being being overweight at that age. What do you think the root cause was though of like your uncomfortability with being fat, right? Because if the body positivity, fat positivity movement reached its logical conclusion, you would have just like been cool with it. I know there's Maybe. physical, you know. I think it depends on the person. Cause even then when I was a kid, like there would be other kids who were like 12 years old mm -hmm. who would whip their shirts off and they kind of yeah. had a belly like me and they'd jump in the pool while yeah, I'm like yeah. putting on my second turtleneck. And never take for... off the shirt of the water park. Oh, it's grabbing onto the slides. Yeah. It's so bad. It, and you're never like going down the slides quick enough yeah. because there's weird friction issues with your turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, man, I, uh, so there were kids who were totally unencumbered by it who would like, when I became a teenager, they would go on dates and, and go to parties and were not insecure. I just happened to be. So yeah. I think even in today's day and age, like you can still be uncomfortable in your own skin, even with all the positivity stuff. Sure. It just depends. I gotta say a thing that made me a lot more comfortable in my own skin was watching you mm. because I was like, here's this chubby, funny, Jewish person on TV, he must be super, super confident. Oh, Girls man. must love him. He must not be afraid to, you know, talk to Wendy at the middle school dance. And it was a lie. In hindsight, there were some nice girls who actually did think I was quite cute at that yeah. size. But Isn't it funny I, the way that works, though. I was not able to hear it. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, what's what's wrong with you? Me? All this?" But they were angels, and I just wasn't able to quite hear it. But yeah, it was a lie. I was serving you a huge lie, and I bought right into it. Yeah, man. kids' television just lies. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that it gave you a little bit like a vestige of hope in those funny years. Josh, today for you we have chicken parmesan, pretty classic, marinated the chicken overnight, panko breadcrumb, a little bit of reduced down tomato sauce, very Italian American. Then we got the penne a la vodka, a little bit of Calabrian chili oil on there. And then of course, uh, tell me one. We're gonna be here a while. That's totally fine, man. This is not like the Olive Garden where they shame you, Josh. I, I respect the opulence. Did I kill it? You killed a dude. I you really like killed it on your it. order. I'm proud of this. I think you should, We're man. Good. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, we gotta go to the vodka a little bit. Did I get gorgeous. some of the Coke? Do you want some of the Coke? <laughs> yeah, 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 get a little bit in the Coke. Get a little bit in the Coke. I mean, you really did kill it. And like a lot of this is like really nostalgic stuff. Seems rooted in the sense of place in New York. And I love that, man. I feel like I'm out on a romantic date at the Trattoria del Valle or something. You want me to serve you? No, I want to serve you. You serve me, please? Let me serve. You know what? You've done all this work. Did you have anything to do with this cooking or is this the team? I consulted on it. This Most of this <laughs> okay. was the team, but you know, I I was there like, yeah, boil the pasta. And they did, I said, please. And they did. And right. look how boiled it is. It's like the way I consult with my accountant on my taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just, you know, make you sure. You can write that off. You can write those curtains <laughs> make off. Make sure I don't go to jail, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I have another serious question. Please. Feel free not to answer. Did you talk about Judaism this much with Corbin Blue? I don't think he's not Jewish. Man, he's Christian. I talk about Christianity a lot with Corbin Blue. Did it, you? It goes into the death thing. Yeah, man. He uh, he played Jesus on Godspell, and he uh, yeah. he hurt his balls so bad in the harness that he actually had to get a sperm count checked. Funny enough, but Jesus, good Jewish kid. He's a nice Jewish boy. He's a Jew also, though, manual labor, which we don't like doing that anymore. Not the best. You know, he's a carpenter. We're not the best at it. But and you know, we can do the books. We can <laughs> do the books for you. And what was Corbin like when all was said and done? What was Corbin Blue's sperm count? Like, it was like four times the average. It was huge, yeah. and you can tell watching him dance. I could see that. I can see you're, both of us, we're not very virile people. I look it, I'm not. I, Soft boy. Is it the creatine? Yeah, the creatine dropping the count. Speaking of Judaism convention, let's talk about death a little bit, man. You I'd love to. were an addict for years, Mazel Tov. You kicked it, you did it. <laughs> okay. Josh, come on, everyone, big. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. You also, did you not expect the uh, the very patronizing uh, hand? <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it. It's like it's like um, getting smartest kid in kindergarten. Yeah, you yeah, which I, mean? I I literally got most improved on the JV team in basketball. I'm dead ass serious. Good for you. Yeah, didn't improve enough to get to varsity. But you talk about food as an addiction as well, and you said in the book, food was killing you slowly. Drugs were killing you quickly. Obviously, you think about death a lot. I mean, were you scared of death at the time? Is that something that you were actively fearful of? It's funny now at, at um, you know, clean and sober and mm. with a kid and a wife and 
Now at this point, like, death doesn't scare me at all. I've done everything I need to do. You think your job's, you, what, come on, man. <laughs> no, I, you know, I certainly want to see my kid like graduate and do all this stuff, but yeah, at this point, you know. You pumped and dumped, your job's done as a dad? I'm here, you know, I, I, I had a show with my name in it. I, I've done fine. But I mean, actually, like like having a kid right now, Do are you more scared of death, like leaving a family behind when you were, like uh, alone, when you talk about going to the spiral inward, like are you more afraid of dying now or back then when it was a sort of actual present fear? Yeah, I mean, I certainly want to like stick around and sure. be there like as, but again, I just think like the whole thing with life is, it's just, I don't know if it's a simulation, but it's certainly sure. like, it's pretty meaningless. I agree with that. So just hang out. Like, yeah. I, I just want to be a good dad and the rest is really icing. Yeah. So everything I do is sort of like in service of providing for my family, being cool, not passing on trauma. I think that's something we can all work on. Yeah. It's like, sometimes we don't get the amends we deserve from the people who hurt us, but we give ourselves the amends by not passing it on to the next generation. Yeah. I think we can cut on that. No, no, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Do you think you can actually make amends on that though? Because don't you think that like a lot of generations, you say that like they were just worried about feeding themselves, putting food on the table. Sure, don't sure, you sure. think that they all had the same goal of like, let's not mess up the kids, you know? Or do you think they just weren't thinking about it? Because I think a lot of people have just failed. And one of my biggest fears is trying everything possible to like not screw up a child and then just doing it. Yeah, I mean, inevitably you're gonna screw them up a little bit. You have to. Yeah. Even if you have the best family and the most normal, like non-traumatic, very mm. cookie cutter upbringing, you're still gonna have to do a fair amount of work on yourself. Sure. I think inevitably it's just leaning into this idea of like, you can't be all things to all people. So you just try to be the best version of yourself or your kid and give them the dignity of their own experience. Now that's where you cut. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, we've reached the end of our long, strange journey. I'm straining from being a little full. We're at dessert. We got the chocolate lava cake. Pretty simple, frozen ganache center. Should ooze. If it doesn't, you can't fire me. I quit. We got our mint chocolate ice cream cake here. Did a little individual, some lovely chocolate shavings on top, and then a wedding cake. A beautiful wedding cake with accurate portraits of us on top. It's, it looks like my guy's going, babe, easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is how I want to actually be dressed at my wedding. All right, so uh, I'm gonna, let, should we cut into this cake all, all adorably like a couple? Yes, because I didn't and do this with my wife at my wedding. I didn't, she wouldn't have any of the pomp and circumstance. She's like, the moment the party starts, we're not stopping it. If there's anything else your wife won't do, Josh, I'm game. <laughs> hold on, hold on, she's a thickin'. Oh. Maybe we can just go off the top. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, we can yeah, go yeah, off the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think that's fair. All right, hold on. Oh, it's gorgeous. And then you said you wanted a wedding cake with sprinkles, and so we got a bunch of sprinkles. Oh, baby girl. And I'm just gonna. Yes. There we go. Wow. Well, there we go. Okay. Sorry. Little... I oh, fudged up, Josh. Josh. I'm no, no, sorry, no, man. It's supposed to be a nice restaurant. No, you didn't. Here we go. Mmm. I'll go bar him. Can you say trans fat? Trans fat. <laughs> Sponsor me, Nabisco. How great is this? This is great. Do you consider yourself like a nihilist or like a, like an optimistic nihilist? An optimistic nihilist. That's the best freaking way to be. It People is. misunderstand it. It's like, it's all meaningless, but be cute about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'll keep up the Instagram aesthetic because I like the trappings of it. Yeah, why I not? I like being champagne drunk on a rooftop or, you know, with a mocktail. Yeah. You know? I'll smell the flowers, but flowers are stupid. Exactly, and you can just get hit by a bus any day. Yes. And that's totally fine. How do you want to go? That's a hell of a question. I don't want to go. I, I talk about it as if it doesn't matter because it's a defense mechanism because I fear death more than anything and everybody really? doesn't believe in God until they're on their deathbed and then they beg for them. Mm. I don't know, something heroic, I think. Not that it matters, because you're dead. You're totally. not gonna know. But yeah, no, saving a like a small animal, like a raccoon. Saving a raccoon from a John Deere tractor. I throw myself in front. Oof. I'm a hero in that story. Very similar, I want to overdose at a White Castle. <laughs> what do you mean this then? How's that heroic? I mean, you know, it's nice. I, <laughs> no? I went to a White Castle for the first time in Cleveland, Ohio, when I saw a man eating burgers so fast that he couldn't breathe. <laughs> he started choking at the table. That's you. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Let's talk about dead parents real quick. Your dad's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I didn't, you didn't need to verify he that. He got out easy. I read the book, yeah. My dad also died. And like both my parents, by the time they died, my, my mom especially, it was, it was kind of estranged. And you know, your dad, you literally never met the guy. I never met the guy and yeah, he kind of ended his life with a perfect record. <laughs> as far as not meeting me. Yeah. 
I failed on that twice now and it sucks. I wish I could have had your dad's stats. Really? No, not really. I really enjoy your, your company. Thank um, you so much. Of course, I find you very profound, but very personable as well. Here, we have to cut into this oh, lava shoot, cake. Oh shoot, it's a lava cake. It's temperature, uh, right. you know, sensitive. Beautiful. It's molten! The team on this show, unbelievable. I suck compared to them. This is I mean, unreal. I'm gonna eat with my hands, I'm a oh, slob. God, please. Did you, back to the dead dad. Did you like grieve when your dad died or do you feel like you already had that process from like not meeting him for forever? I couldn't believe that for a dad who I'd never met that at 26 when I found his obituary that I did have to mourn a guy who I'd never met. It's weird, right? Without any of the requisite like deli trades from a good Jewish funeral. Yeah. It was upsetting. Yeah. Um, How'd you get over that? I think having a kid helped. Yeah. And then my dad had a whole other family who I like saw pictures of, I like found them on Facebook. And what I realized was he was for them what I always wanted him to be for me. And so I couldn't be the arbiter of the absolute, like what's the absolute right? Like yeah. he was two different guys, one with me and one with them. And I don't know, you know, he's probably just scared. He was pretty old when he hooked up with my mom. That's hot though. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> You also talk about how it reminds me of the Jewish concept of tikkun olam, right? Your whole goal on this earth is to right the wrongs of the people that came before you. Yeah. Growing up with Max, I mean, do you feel a very, very strong urge of like, I have to do this to spite my dead dad? I do a lot of things to spite my dead parents, to be clear. That's where this is coming from. If there's anything of value, it's to like fix the bad feedback loop, loop of generational trauma, right? Yeah. I didn't know my grandfather, but I heard he was a uh, pretty interesting guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot least. of pretty interesting grandpas and it's never like a good quirky stamp collection. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> cute kind of quirky. And uh, so, you know, and I know that my mom had it really tough and then she went and worked on herself and like, but you know, I had a, a good childhood, but certainly had my issues. Mm. And now I look at this kid, Max, who like, because of four generations of people trying to do it a little bit better than their parents, yeah. now might have like a healthy swing at life and like might only be like normal amounts of uh, dysfunction. Oh. That's pretty cute. That's incredible. That's, that's the goal. That's why you work to build things, right? Like that's yeah. the whole point. Will I probably spoil him and he won't know the value of a dollar and he'll be one of those annoying whatever, you know, gen. Don't, you send, start, him to, don't send him to the Brentwood school. Do you start at gen A now? Cause we're at gen Z. It's like gen Omega or just like gen climate apocalypse. Like, I don't know what they're, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. mad about stuff. You know, everyone's had their, Taylor's laughing cause he's gen Z. Yeah, whatever <laughs> gen he's gonna be, I'm sure they'll be super annoying, but yeah. hopefully he won't be too much of an asshole. <laughs> Josh, you ready for the lightning round? <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the concept of legacy. If you had to choose between one thing to be known for when you die, between Drake and Josh, a Vine video of you touching a statue's nipples, or Red Dawn, which one are you choosing? Gotta go with Drake and Josh. It's made people pretty happy, and for that I'm very honored. I, Red Dawn made me very happy, man. Watching you play football, I was just like, there's my Jewish athletic role model that I've needed my whole life. I appreciate that, <laughs> but you do a lot of psychoactive substances, so. You know, just a skosh, just a skosh. It was, one, it was we're at Yosemite, what are you, are you not gonna? All right, other than me, who's the one person, dead or alive, you'd wanna share your actual last meal with? Probably uh, Oprah. You got a like strong connection to Oprah or? My character on Drake and Josh loved her. I think we, it, first of all, it would be a super viral moment. It's and your I, last meal and you're worried about how many likes and views it's gonna get. You know, finish the way you started. <laughs> you know, thirsty for people to like you. I feel that, we can't run from it. Yeah. Uh, dream eulogizer at your funeral. Ooh. Nice, that's a good one. Yeah. It's like wife easy, son yeah. easy. Yeah, Oprah, 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 Oprah again. Doubling yeah. up on Oprah. <laughs> She'd kill it. Of course. She's a beautiful order. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered after you die? Oprah again. Mm -hmm. Do you have any regrets in life? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> like tons, right? You know what? I don't really have any regrets. It's one thing I feel very lucky about. Any regret that I might have is like, well, it got me here. I know that's like the corny trite sort of response, but it's true. No, I think it's kind of like how a lot of atheists are actually pantheists, where it's mm. like, you actually kind of believe that God is everywhere. You're atheist, but you say, oh my God. I think some of those I have no regrets people are actually like, well, I've regretted everything so much all the time yeah. that there's no point anymore. If you don't absolutely hate where you're at right in this moment, I think it's easier to not have regrets. I mean, I'm, and I'm here with you. You're gonna be regretting on the toilet later, I mean, man. This my, is heavy. My cholesterol is, <laughs> do you want the number? Yeah. 270 last time it was checked. 270, that's like half as much as Corbin Blue's sperm count. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Josh, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy adjacent. <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> sure, that's all we can hope for. I don't even want you to elaborate, man, me neither. <laughs> and then finally, finally, look right into that camera right there. 
right into that camera. I gotta right, do it. I gotta do look it. right at Trevor. Yeah, look Trevor in the eyes. So handsome. Split your eyes to look at Trevor and Nicole. <laughs> That's Shane and Plenum. <laughs> and deliver your last words. I buried it. It's gonna screw up everyone for years after I'm dead. They're gonna be like, you say what? you buried it? They're just yeah. gonna say what? It's not even like I yeah. buried the treasure because then people would wonder about where the treasure is. But for you, there's, they're wondering what it is. What it is, where it's buried, yeah. it's gonna screw up everyone. Yeah. And that's did he my dig legacy. a hole himself or did he find a hole? Yeah, and like if they can't find some of my money, they're gonna be like, he buried it. Yeah. Well, and they're gonna start small, like my, the backyard of my home, yeah. then the front yard, and then they'll expand from there. God damn, bro, you totally got him, man. <laughs> oh my God, we said we'd squirt this into each other's mouths and we never did. That's just, I'm so sorry. We, that's, just, that's we just talked about it. That's a relapse. Just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. I feel Wait. terrible. Wait, I'll get it right this time. I'll get it right. <laughs> no, I don't feel it at all. <laughs> oh. uh, do me, do me, do me. Oh, dude, there's so many active knives oh over here. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh it's so oh. cute. Good for us. <laughs> He's gonna go yeah, deadlift 800 pounds and yeah. I'm gonna end up in the urgent care and Nicole's gonna have to take me to yogurt land. That's what happened last time. <laughs> Herniated my back, had to go to yogurt land to fix it. Did it help? Yeah, sure, sure did, man. Oh my God, they're lychee. Good. <laughs> Josh Beck, thank you so much. Thank the you. Snap out of my food coma. <laughs> um, I appreciate it, man. Uh, plug anything you want to plug. Um, I'm starting my YouTube channel back up. That's incredible. What, what kind of content? But like versions of this. I'm gonna steal this idea, maybe. <laughs> also, check out Josh's book, Happy People Are Annoying. I actually read it. Some people's books I've lied. And this one I didn't. I actually read it and I even listened to part of it um, on Audible as well. Not even a sponsor, but I double listened to it. Well, I, I read it and then I... Buy the book, you schmucks. He has no reason to be here if you don't buy his book and watch his YouTube channel. <laughs> Josh, thanks again, man. Dude, thank you. This was awesome. And thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. The diaphragm's pushing up. Mythical Kitchen brought to you by Insulin. Amen. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, you know where to find us. See y'all next time. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Heel Strike tea now at mythical.com.